power grids require careful management to ensure they can cope with sudden increases in demand and keep the frequency of the power reaching households consistent. This will be made more difficult worldwide because of using renewable energy sources. Renewable sources usually put out varying amounts of power due to uncontrolled variables like weather. Thus it would be expected to see gaps between what grids can supply and what's being demanded at various times. The United States is pushing for renewable sources, but due to this problem, if more than 15% of power output was from renewable sources, parts of the grid would receive power cuts. It would cost 340 billion US dollars to supply 20% renewably without power cuts. Massive banks of batteries are expensive and inefficient. For example, this bank could only supply an average American house for 15 minutes. An efficient method of power management and storage is needed. Superconductor becomes a perfect electrical conductor with no resistance when cooled below a critical temperature. Early in 2008, I thought of using Superconductor to manage and store power by trapping a current in a no-resistance circuit. I thought I could use electromagnetism to get power in and out, and I imagined storing and releasing energy in a repeated cycle, or when needed, like in a power grid. This device would be different, because it stores electricity without static charges, like in a battery, but by holding current. Furthermore, it could potentially store high amounts of power. But before further development, I needed to test and observe where the current can be trapped in a no-resistant circuit. I conducted an experiment to investigate where the current induced by a magnetic field in a superconductor ring would continue to flow when no further current is added. I was expecting to see the current decay slowly as it continued circulating in the ring. I was expecting to see this as the material the university had at the time was not complete superconductor, and I had measured some resistance in it with a micro-ohmmeter. Here is a cross-section of this tape. I also conducted tests on non-superconducting and superconducting superconductor to observe the difference resistance makes on my observations. For this experiment, I needed to induce current in one direction and then observe this current as no further current was induced. To achieve this, I needed to make a magnetic field that got stronger and then stayed at the same strength as I am observing the current. This magnetic field is produced by applying a DC signal to a coil. To measure current, I would normally use an ammeter, which is wired in series. But because an ammeter would have some resistance, I instead used a current probe. This measures the magnetic field around the ring to deduce the current flowing inside. I captured information from the probe on an oscilloscope. Analysis of this data revealed that superconductor did allow for the current to circulate. It continued far longer and larger initial currents were induced when it was superconducting than when not superconducting. Furthermore, the current decay fitted the curve produced by this formula. Using this formula, it can be deduced what would keep the current circulating for longer. This experiment showed that if an efficient way of getting energy in and out of the superconductor was found, then my device would work. I only came up with two ideas regarding how to get energy into the superconductor ring efficiently. One idea was to put the ring inside an array of vertically arranged coils being turned on and off in sequence. The second, more effective idea came when I was doing maths based on Maxwell's equations. Here is Faraday's law of induction, x to time. It follows that the electric field times the length of the wire equals the voltage. Where this is the magnetic flux, and this is what is being induced, a small voltage followed by a large voltage which cancels out the small voltage leaves a current circulating in the ring. This project has developed my initial concept using physics and experiments. Using my research I am now going to pursue building larger models for demonstrations at higher currents. This is now a two year piece of research in science 
which has yielded exciting results. It has also created a path to building efficient devices using my novel storage idea, which would be useful on a large scale for power management in the power supply process. Thank you for listening. Please find more information in my logbook, and I'm sorry for going over time.